And the last thing we talked about in the selection tool menu is this item here, color fill, which can also be very useful, but as with all powerful tools, it also has its downside. So let's talk about that right now. And we'll start by just cleaning up this image a little bit. I want to move this lamp over to a place, say over here, and I'll make it larger and just make this room a bit more believable. So I'll make that lamp larger and this table I will move back a little bit. Let's say it's a very minimalist room, a John Pawson room, uh, but John Pawson gone country. It's not great, but it's good enough. So I'll, I'll just adjust this lamp a little bit more because we're going to be working on this wall. So now I'm going to add a layer and let's say that you wanted to add a painting or let's say you wanted to add five paintings to this room and they're just going to be abstract paintings. They're not going to be literal paintings, although that's easy to do, but we're going to make abstract paintings and we're going to make them by using the rectangle selection tool. So for example, I'll make sure I have white selected already and I'll go into the rectangle tool and we're on the top of the layer stack. So make sure you're there and I will go back to that tool and stretch my first rectangle and I'll say, great, that's going to be my first abstracted painting. And you'll recall from our earlier lesson that if I now use distort, I can move this back up like this and make it look like it's in perspective. So that's one way to make a painting. And because of that, you can move relatively quickly with select and fill. So I can make another painting. Um, I can add another layer over here and make another painting that's going to be over here. And oops, I forgot to do that. And I'll do a rectangular selection and I'll drag and drop and then I'll modify that. So this is just, and there's several ways to do that. And I'll try and pick up these perspective lines and this will be an even bigger painting, almost uh, floor to ceiling. So that's one way to add paintings. But let's say that I, I'm going to add a lot and I don't want to keep going back and dragging and dropping or hitting the select, you know, I don't want to keep going back to the layers and hitting fill layer. There is another way to do this and I'll turn these off so you can see and I'll add a new layer up here and I encourage you to do the same. And now let's go back to the selection, but we're going to add this little icon. We're going to activate what's called color fill. So now what happens when I draw that rectangle, you'll see what happens. It automatically fills with the color I've chosen. Under the selection, I can change the color. Let's make this crazy. I'll go back. I'll make sure that color fill is activated and I'll be in rectangular selection mode and I'll pull it down and there goes that yellow color. And then I go back and do my adjustments and all that stuff. You get the idea. But now that's the virtue of the automatic color fill. The problem is it's very easy to forget that automatic color fill is on. So now if I go back into any of these things, for instance, if I go to one of my walls and I decide, oh, let me just make sure I select that wall or for clarity purposes, I'll, I'll talk about this rug. And if I'm, if I'm going on with my project and remember, I've forgotten that I have color fill activated. Okay. So I'm charging merrily along. I want to change the color of this rug or select it for some reason. And I tap on the layer. I tap once to activate it. I tap another time to bring up the layer pop-up menu. And now I go to select and look what happens. That object, because I have color fill turned on, that automatically fills whatever color was up here. And by the way, that's not a bad color for that. I kind of like that, but let's, let's look at it again. Let's change the color and let's go with a violet this time. So again, I'm charging merrily along. And then this time, let's say I'm looking at the 
floor and I want to select that floor because I want to work on it maybe put a gradient on it and I come down here and I go to select and suddenly the floor turns gray violet and I can't remember why and then I look down and sure enough color fill is on okay so it's very challenging you just have to remember about that and you have to remember not to be disoriented when you see something suddenly and dramatically change color okay so that's the power of color fill well, let's do another quick bonus session again if you've uh, good at all this stuff already by all means please go on to the next lesson but i'm going to go into the layers and remember remember this painting that we created well let's make it into an actual painting or let's say it's a photograph okay and the first thing i'll do and I'm, i'll go quickly over some of these things first thing i'm going to do is duplicate that painting okay and now i'm going to proactively turn this into multiply because this is going to have to do with our shadows once again i'm going to go back to our favorite gray violet shadow color and i'm going to proactively fill this layer first of all i'm going to select it i've learned my lesson believe me and now i'm going to proactively fill it and look at that by the way all i because i have color fill on all i did was select this layer and watch this icon when i tap select because we're in multiply mode now i'm going to take this shadow that you can't see back there i'm going to take that shadow and i'm going to not distort it but i'm just going to make it uniformly larger and pull it down and maybe reposition it a bit and now i'll switch to freeform and then i've got to switch to distort and i'll make this bigger so you can see what i'm doing and i'll just use this shortcut to create a shadow i'm going to pretend this is a photograph on eighth inch museum board something that would be very impractical in the real world but it's just to make an example and normally things don't have two shadows in fact what i should do is move both this layer and this layer and i'm going to move them or rather i'm going to take the overall room shadow that we did and i'm going to move that above so just by doing that I've placed that painting in shadow. I'm also going to move this lamp. I'm going to move that lamp back above the shadow because I liked it when it was brighter like that. So again, to undo that, lamp was below the shadow. Bring it up and put it above the shadow. I'm going to lighten that shadow a bit. So I'll go into the adjustments, hue, saturation, and brightness up here. And what I'm trying to do is make this part and this part match because I'm now going to come in with the airbrush in eraser mode. Here's the eraser. I've got my nice soft airbrush. I'm going to adjust the size of it and I'm going to get rid of the intensity of that shadow up here because there really wouldn't be two shadows. But I'll lighten it a little bit because it was a little too strong for me before. Now let's do what we set out to do, which is let's add an actual photograph to this backboard that we have, this eighth inch foam core. And up comes my photo library. And here I am going to tap on this photo of this beautiful building in Memphis, Tennessee. I had a feeling but I can quickly wrangle that into place by first doing a uniform stretch. Then I'll move it near its vicinity. And what I like to do is kill two birds with one stone. I like to use the side adjustment to actually make that top vertex roughly correct. Then I'll come down here to the bottom handle and add one more time. And there is my framed photograph and it's even under the shadow so that's how again to use these insert tools in combination with a move and transform tool and we've even thrown in a little bit of a shadow study and you can see how all these tools start to come together